In today's top stories, Greenpeace activists were arrested Saturday after successfully delaying offshore drilling in the Arctic. They boarded an oil rig after being denied a request for a copy of the oil spill plan. The equivalent radiation of 40,000 chest x-rays has been detected at the Fukushima nuclear plant in Japan. This is the highest level reported since the devastating earthquake in March. 40,000 tons of radioactive water remain below reactor number one. David Koch is blaming the Obama administration for high gas prices. Koch's conservative foundation will launch a campaign this week that blames energy regulations on energy corporations for increased prices at the pumps. The government is offering a $10 million prize for the most aesthetically pleasing and energy efficient replacement to traditional light bulbs. Experts predict new light bulbs will last up to 22 years and use less than 10 watts of electricity. South Korea is showing off what it says is the world's first totally eco-friendly business building. Here's more on that story. This newly opened business center near Seoul is designed as a showcase for South Korea's drive to reduce carbon emissions. The building houses the country's National Institute of Environmental Research. The institute's Lee Jai Bum says it's the world's first carbon zero office building. In South Korea, buildings are responsible for about 25 percent of greenhouse gas emission. And this is why the project to build this type of structure is very important in reducing emissions. From the roof, which is covered by photovoltaic panels to harvest sunlight, to the basement where the geothermal heating system is housed, the building employs 66 different energy-saving technologies. Automatically adjusting blinds control the amount of sunlight coming in, while sensors in the ceiling monitor and respond to CO2 levels being emitted by workers as they breathe. When levels reach a predetermined point, the sensors trigger windows to open. Active and passive technologies working together will reduce CO2 emissions by 100 tons per year. Researchers say the Carbon Zero building will play an important part in educating the public about energy-efficient building technology, all part of an aggressive strategy to create a greener future for South Korea.